Go ahead. It's unmuted. Stephanie, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, good. Hopefully, you can see us too. We can see. Michael, how are you feeling? I don't have to read yours now, right? No, no, no. Okay, no. great. No, and, and to the extent that I speak, it's being <laughs> drastically different than that. Stephanie, how are you feeling? My COVID test was negative and she gave me two more medications just to help the cough calm down. So she says there's so much going around right now with this. I think you have a bar. I'm connected. Not, 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 not from Mark, but I think you no, that's, that's, yeah, that's, may have a similar. So anybody tuning in tonight, uh, we have one contravocation. We're down one commissioner and we have one a commissioner attending a meeting virtually, which is allowed under law. Okay. Right now, just, just, this is highly unusual, <laughs> and we are just speaking here. We're just speaking yes. here. Oh, it is highly legal, it takes the government, a governor's extension of the order for our remote meeting attend. So we are good, we're all compliant. So we are ready to go whenever you are. Okay, I call the July 20th, 2021 regular board meeting one Park District to order. Please, Lisa, please call the wall. Right, it's 702. Commissioner Boren? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Colby Gabson? Commissioner Schneider? Here. President Brooks? Here. Do we say Commissioner Record again or no? Uh, yes, you can you? Um, yes, can everybody tell us Commissioner Record? Sorry. Yes, okay, so. Uh, Commissioner Record. Commissioner Record. All right, all right. Moving on to consent agenda items. Under advisement, is there anyone 
uh, who would like to make a verbal comment. If so, please limit comments to three minutes per person. Um, I just wanted to make a note that we are doing uh, public feedback for the um, block renovation. So if anybody wants to do comment to that, we can do so after our report. So we'll do another kind of open dialogue between a little bit of the report. I, think, yes. well, I did have one that came in um, at uh, 615 today from uh, Adam Start. Oops, we lost. No, pause. Just pause. No, keep going. Is she, is she still there? Yeah, she's still there. Yeah, I'm still here. Funny to your just reveal plans to bust through a multi million dollar gold legal West School, West Park, Illinois State budget project that I believe was first made public this Friday by tweet. Given timelines were considered, this seems an effort to rush you another multi million dollar project that serves the personal interests of relatively few, including the Glencoe Park District Commissioners, using taxpayer dollars of Glencoe and Illinois residents. Also, Midwestern continues to disregard much less costly maintenance needs of facilities that many more Glencoe residents have repeatedly communicated for years are needed to prevent the further decay and more injuries from occurring on such facilities. It also squanders without legitimate representation, tax dollars, and state intentions in, in initially funding those facilities. One example of this pattern is Lakefront Park, specifically the tennis courts that have been neg uh, neg negligently allowed to decay without basic maintenance for many decades. Evidence is, of this is plentiful and imputable. This contract with basic maintenance performed by neighboring village and city park districts, including some really cited circumstances that exist of lost water waterways. Hundreds of residents, including those living adjacent and nearby the facility, have communicated their support regarding the need for a facility that is better maintained for safety and proper use. Some of these residents have communicated to the park district and village for a very long time throughout the past decade. This has been overwhelmingly shared and communicated uh, community concern and consensus. While all neighboring community park district tennis courts were fully, fully utilized throughout most of the pandemic, but this tennis, tennis was among the safest and healthiest activities for residents of all ages and genders, those Glencoe facilities were unsafe to use, and, and for some who did not attempt to use them, injuries occurred as a direct consequence of the conditions. It's unfortunate that these days some public representatives do not fully communicate factually do not put the public interest first, do not use the greatly advanced options to communicate with their constituents, do not seek input and feedback in a timely and thorough manner to ensure the resident funds are from levy taxes are being prudently and in accordance with resident, resident preferences, rather than preferences of a handful of commissioners. Uh, it's also questionable when some of these commissioners are appointed rather than elected. In fact, the commissioner was recently sworn in after planning to sell his home and move out of Glencoe, resulting in another appointment by a small group. It's unfortunate that excuses for allowing facilities to decay became unsafe and causing grief are not facts based and are misleading, misleadingly provided, even when contradicted by evidence that proves otherwise. We have all seen and many have been experiencing unfortunate consequences of representation that is not transparent, not candid, does not prioritize the interests of the in fact, residents who previously raised the issue of day safety with the Glencoe Park District Commissioners were dismissively told that the facilities were safe, despite much clear evidence to the contrary. Uh, contrary. They were told to be quiet or the facilities would be removed more quickly than being contemplated and through a lack of maintenance and decay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, they were told to join a private country club if they wanted to play safe, had, want a safe, playable facility. They were told to consider deals of providing money as well in excess of the park district and village taxes. Um, one is anything comparable to facilities being provided by ordinary tax funds by all of the co neighboring uh, villages, named uh, several uh, neighboring towns. Um, it's almost finished, just because well, we other people do the three minutes. And what are we, uh, so, we're, yeah, we're, she muted? She muted herself. Yeah, no, sorry, I wasn't saying anything. Okay. Uh, 
Consider using our tax bonds on to maintain the facilities that ex exist today that were built with resident tax money. Um, that, that neighbors in the, in the vicinity and residents more broadly support and could openly and frankly uh, and easily obtain to share this input much more broadly, equitably, and responsibly than you are doing. Communication is easier than ever, and whenever you want to communicate your preferences, you actively use email, social media. In fact, you avoid me highlighting questions for communications on your preferred interest. Please, this time to come to do the right thing and represent and serve the broader community at Lango. Okay. Were there any other comments from when you reached out to the public uh, regarding? Yeah. Um, just one more, but my report's here. So I will share his email, though, with the board later. That's on, along with Anna Mark. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, so we will move on then to the next uh, agenda on the list our renovations presentation. And the community input. This will be presented by Lisa Shepard and Chris Lawyer. Hey, yes. where's Chris? Oh. Okay, so. Okay, well, I'm going to start really just so really start. This way. Oh, there he is. We're ready to start, Chris. Evening. All right, so. As we brought up to the board at our last committee meeting, there's an opportunity for um, to get for an OSAC grant, and we looked over all of our current capital project um, things that have been on our list for improvement um, within a three to five year time plan. And then we looked at the qualifications needed for an OSAC grant and presented it to the board, which the board uh, gave the consensus to go ahead and apply for um, a grant for West Park redevelopment. Um, so tonight's meeting, what we really want to do is um, make sure we get input from residents to what they would like to see in this park, give them some ideas of staff, give ideas what would make a good grant project um, and that are needed and will outline in our master plan. Um, and then we'll outline the next steps. So basically our pro project goals are to refresh existing infrastructure. So we're not asking, um, we have certain things that have been identified in our master plan that need to be um, refreshed in this part. We want to meet our ADA accessibility needs. As the board knows, we did an ADA transition plan, and um, this was indicated as a need for improvement. We have no way to get uh, players or spectators to the baseball field um, who have ADA needs. We want to enhance the recreation amenities for, not to, for the community and also for school use. And of course, we want to keep the character of our neighborhood. So we'll go really quick to the picture of the, the field. This is the current condition of West Park and obviously West School. Um, Chris, do you want to say anything about this little? Absolutely. Yeah. First off, good evening. I'm Chris Leiter. I'm the director of parks here in Glencoe, for those who are watching online as well. Um, Lisa, what we have up on the screen is an overhead GIS of West Park. Just to kind of start to inform our discussion tonight. Um, this is uh, from a couple of years ago after the project, so some of that brown area has turned green. But uh, for the scope of tonight's discussion, we're really talking about everything to the west of the playground area and sidewalk and parking lot. So that's going to encompass the tennis courts, the athletic fields, um, the area between Willow and Cherry Tree Lane there on the corner, and a few other ideas. So, all right, so next slide, Penny. So this uh, park was acquired in 1914, so it's 107 years old. The baseball fields were built in 1990, so they're 31 years old, way past their um, useful life. The tennis courts were built in 1994, so they're 27 years old. Um, the playground discovery area was built in 2017. That is not part of this project. And the parking lot was resurfaced in 20, or will be resurfaced in 2021, probably they're doing it now. Um, back. And then the tennis courts were slated to be um, color coded last year. We paused that for, because of uh, the, the virus or the pandemic. And uh, we were on a schedule to be recoded this year. 
um, whenever the, the ability of um, the little backlog. So um, resurfacing, as Chris will talk, is more like a band aid um, to keep those cords lasting until two or three years until we're able to redo this um, court. Next. Uh, I, I can take this. So, um, as Lisa indicated, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources uh, communicated that they would be running an open space land acquisition and development grant program this year. Uh, that's a $400,000 matching grant. Uh, the Park District most recently won one of those grants for Duke Park on Old Green Bay Road. Um, it's a great way to offset your regular maintenance costs. So, to take something that you know you will need to spend taxpayer dollars on and leverage those state funds to help you offset those costs. So in developing the potential project, we have to really be cognizant of, you know, if this is a grant applicable project, and if we want to pursue that grant moving forward, if that's the right fit. Okay, so concepts that the board and staff are not recommending being considered are sports field lighting, permanent outfield fence, and there'll be no parking changes to Cherry Tree Lane. Next. Um, concepts, concepts under consideration. Um, do you want to take this? Or yes, you? absolutely. So uh, to Lisa's point, uh, several years ago, we installed a walking loop here at the Take-Up Center uh, in our Park District's master plan and comprehensive plan. Walking areas were notated amongst residents to be one of the areas that they'd like to see growth in the community as far as our infrastructure. Uh, what we imagine is uh, we're going to have to have an ADA accessible path of travel to any amenities that we redevelop in the park in this project. So really taking what could be something like a boring sidewalk and really making it into a recreational amenity, looping around the park in a way that isn't obtrusive to the neighborhood, but also gives people an opportunity to walk also uh, for PE use, uh, year-round use, depending on the materials we select. Uh, we do have some choices as far as materials go. There's concrete, asphalt, and an aggregate product. Um, there's definitely pros and cons to every choice that we're looking at. I mean, first, concrete is very durable. There's year-round use. That's a 30 to 50 year lifespan. It is the highest expensive cost up front. Um, on the flip side, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people who don't find it to be aesthetically appealing. They think it's not permeable, that it can take away from the, the feeling of a natural space. Other products that are available are aggregate. Um, we most recently used a product like that on the new section of Trail on Old Green Bay Road. Product is very aesthetically appealing, it's permeable. Uh, it is a high maintenance product. Um, it would be the most expensive product that we can install in the long term as far as operational costs. But there's definitely a much higher aesthetic value to it. And uh, rounding out the bases, really, we have asphalt, which is the least expensive up front. Uh, there are some annual maintenance costs and some uh, environmental risks that can kind of go along with those processes. It's also uh, the least aesthetically appealing. So, from a cost standpoint, it's the lowest cost, but in the long term, it may not be the right product for that part. So, just to know is also um, with concrete and asphalt, there could be a year round use to it. Um, Allow it, um, you shovel it, and use it throughout the year. You don't really need that because you know, for a swallow, that will be a pound here and take it because people use just uh, walking um, 12 months out of the year. So we would not be able to do that, and the school would be able to use that either. So that's something to keep in mind what the benefits of country asphalt. Also, to remember is that the walking path, we're not proposing that it interferes at all with the use of the baseball or softball fields. Um, so we'll, Chris will talk later is that we want to make sure one of our recommendations is to make um, the baseball field or softball field more multi-use. So we use the baseball, different age groups, softball, kickball, things like that. So we want to make sure when we design the walking path that does not interfere with those recreational activities. So our placement of that will be taking that into consideration. So Next concept that we really want to look at based on the condition of the existing asset of the tennis court. So Lisa spoke to this a little bit earlier. Um, well, we have the courts coming in for a color coat, which is basically like a light grinding in a full paint job this year. It, it's really more of a temporary fix. We're going to see those cracks reappear year after year. And we're just, we just feel like it's at a point where we really need to develop a long-term plan for all of our tennis facilities in the park district. So what we're, what we're currently looking at in particular for this site is 
the potential to convert one court area to dedicated pickleball courts. So we have three courts on site. Um, one court would potentially net us two to three pickleball courts. Uh, this, there's been a high resident demand for pickleball. Uh, we have no dedicated courts here in Glencoe, but what we're proposing would keep a similar footprint to what we have out there. We're not proposing effectively tacking on a fourth court on the existing tennis court. We're really sticking to the area that we have and really focusing on it as a maintenance related task. Uh, under, under consideration going forward is in the athletic field. So as you guys may know, the athletic field of West Park is not in the best of condition. Uh, it's not well drained. The backstops themselves are at the end of their useful life. Uh, we have invested some resources there into making repairs related to a safety nature, but they're not very aesthetically appealing, nor are they very well used based on the condition. So what we're looking at first and foremost is to replace the existing backstop with similar site appropriate equipment. So um, I'll go back, you know, we're not envisioning something like this. Well, that's not gonna work at West Park. So um, I, I, I would say something like what we have out there now, but clean and new and more of a muted color than the neon green backstops that we currently have. Uh, furthermore, we're looking at uh, the potential use of synthetic turf on the infield of the large baseball field, which is referred to as a pony field. Uh, synthetic turf in, in infield is something rather new in our industry. We were seeing 10, 15 years ago, park districts and municipalities turfing entire fields. And they were developing these multi-million dollar projects and it was really creating very dedicated use. People couldn't picnic, they couldn't run their dogs. It was really just a dedicated athletic field. Uh, we, don't, we don't feel like that fits the character of West Park. In particular, it, it's just very cost prohibitive and it also would restrict the use of the park. So what we're proposing is a synthetic curb infield. So that would just be the actual area that's like considered the clay where the bases are. So the benefits of this is a much greater use time frame for residents than the school. It doesn't get muddy, it's well drained. It's attractive all year long, it's not gonna turn brown. There's no watering needed. Um, we would not need to use any pesticides or fertilizers in this area as it would be synthetic curb. There's no cutting, mowing or trimming. And included in that is also improved playability for all ages. So right now, the baselines are static. We can't go out, we can't play a group of second graders on a field designed for seventh and eighth graders. Whereas with the synthetic turf infield, you just move the bases up. There's basically portable holes in the field. If you unplug a cap, you move the bases up, you play second graders out there that day. A different day, you pay seventh graders out there. You can play softball, baseball, kickball. It really makes it a much greater recreational asset for the community versus one field for seventh and eighth grade boys. So that, that's why we really think that it, it, it's a good fit for this project, in particular, the amount of use that we know District 35 will get out of this year round. So um, there's, a, there's a lot of information out there about synthetic curve, and one of the big concerns that we always hear is what's the product laid down on top of? We wouldn't be looking at laying it down on concrete or compacted earth. I mean, it's not gonna be that like astroturf carpet that you might see 25, 30 years ago, it's really a synthetic turf grass that gets put down over stone. So it will become better drained than what we currently have out there. So included in the discussion about the athletic fields is the small field. Um, it's on the corner of uh, Willow Tree and Cherry Tree Lane. We refer to that in-house as the K-ball field, the kindergarten field. Um, we're looking at making some improvements there, changing the backstop, you know, exploring based on cost, whether we could have a small synthetic turf area there, you know, of course, the ADA access, where the drinking fountain is going to be right now. It's kind of in a tough spot. You have to walk all the way across the park, behind the bushes, you know, those, those types of things we're looking at exploring as well. Um, in addition, park drainage. So as anybody who lives around that park knows, that park holds a lot of water, especially by the large baseball field in the back corner there. So um, we're challenged in the fact that um, when you're holding water in the park system, we're typically holding water across all of you. So we're not able to just go and pump out one particular park because we can't pump out every park. We don't really have a rhyme or reason as to why one whole park is more important than another park. So we really envision having proper drainage in this park, engaging the services of a civil engineer. And in that whole process, it's about draining the park properly in a way that doesn't negatively impact the neighbors. So it's not about raising the park up 30 inches so all the water runs off our property out of the neighboring residence. 
It's about collecting the water, properly storing it, and then feeding it into the village's stormwater system as appropriate. So another one of the uh, areas that we've heard anecdotally is the restroom in this park. So currently the park has a porta potty. It's screened behind a number of our varieties on the back of the tennis court. Um, we envisioned having a dialogue around potentially having an individual family use restroom in that area. Um, obviously that would be a large cost driver on the project. So we really have to see where our numbers are coming in and, and what we can afford. A, a park restroom could run around a quarter million dollars. So um, that, that's something we're exploring. Included in that could be the potential for a small gathering area like what we see here at Melvin Durlin Park. It's 16 by 16. It's something that we're considering. Not something that we're imagining dropping out in the center of the park, but something that is concealed behind the tennis courts in a way that it doesn't become an eyesore or a nuisance. You know, so um, included in that is um, also some discussion about fitness stations. So we have some fitness stations in Shelton Park, and we're thinking something a little bit different than that. Uh, we've heard from the school that they would like something that uh, students could potentially utilize. We're not imagining like Muscle Beach here. It's not going to be like a hangout spot where everybody's banging three weights or anything like that, but something maybe connected to our arterial path system, a few pods or something like that is worth considering. Like pull up bars, pull up bars a climbing bar, something um, very static. I, I don't see dropping, you know, six or seven park style elliptical bikes out there or anything like that. Um, but anything that we would do, we would want to choose muted colors. So. This is not a great site for like bright yellow or you know neon green. We're really seeking things in earth tones, really to make sure that it fits in the community. Um, as part of that as well, we've heard some feedback of, from the school about outdoor gathering and classroom space. So we all know with COVID, um, school has moved outside in a lot of ways. So uh, one of the things that we've looked at is there's something called a Jens Jensen style council ring. Basically, it's like a low seat wall with a small raised stone at the front where a teacher could stand and the children would sit on the wall. Again, very passive use, not something that um, we envision creating a huge disruption in the park, but maybe something that we could link to our path that moves around the park. Um, it's also important to note that we do, at West, we do our uh, girls' sports camp. So a lot of these can be for help. Yes. Us in the summer months, we hope that shade structure to get on the sun and we take a break, water breaks or whatever. Yeah. Um, we put the station and things like that. We assist in our, our ever growing um, girls sports camp. Yes. yes. So we, we've had some significant success already at this site with the collaborative shared playground. And I think we're looking to build on that success and really fitting something that's appropriate into that park site uh, into, our, into our concept plan. So I just uh, want to open up the floor to any comments from those that have joined us this evening. Questions? You're off. Either of you have any comments? Oh, I was just oh, go ahead. I, I just was wondering if there'd be a space for a more senior citizen gathering space of some kind, like you mentioned, a, a wall where the kids would sit with the teacher. That, that's, a, that's a good idea. Yeah, in the shade structure too. We envision that. Yeah, shade structure. Yeah, it would be great for a senior gathering space. What is the thing behind it that it's going to be used for now? The, the garden area? Oh, that, yeah, yeah. So that, um, we, we refer to that as a discovery area. The kids gather there during recess. Um, it's there's a, there's a whole premise where um, children are kept way too clean now. And this is an opportunity to really get into the earth and get dirty and we have different um, samplings of landscape materials and things to crawl on and manipulate um, oh, logs, rocks. I mean, it, it's 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 half garden, half playground, and it's a spot where you see a lot of the kids gathering yeah, and sitting. Yeah. I mean, just kind of the chill out spot, if yeah. that makes sense. I'm very popular with school kids. Um, I, I can say a whole bunch of things really fast, um, just to throw them out there. I don't have a time limit. Yeah. I don't know who, and I wish I would have wrote, wrote down who wrote that email. The first thing I want to do is respond to that. Um, it's absurd. I've read the packet that this is rushed through, or there's any contradictions between anybody sitting here. Um, just wanted to put that on the record. I mean, if you read the materials, it's clear that this is literally years in advance from happening. And to quote, your own package goal of tonight's discussion, not this tonight, but earlier in July, is not to design the projects, 
Um, I applaud you guys for how much outreach you're doing. There are signs all over West right now. It's just not just a tweet um, or an email or something like that. Um, but as is typical, there's two of us for the neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think it's absurd when you get responses like that. I, it pained me that you had to read it from your own voice and it wasn't yours. But there's so many things in there that I'm not even going to dig in by comments. Um, Thank you. Um, two major points that I wanted to make, and then I added a fourth point because um, I mostly agreed with the things and the ideas and the general concepts that are put forward in the packet. And obviously, this is very early on. You're in planning. Things will happen further down the road, things like that. So there's no need to get into like this move two feet to the right or things like that. Um, but the first is, um, I would really like it. We've got over there the big ball field and what's referred to now as the K field. If that big ball field is going to become a multi-use, and I fully support turf in that, I think there's a lot of great benefits to it. I'm a huge native plant person, so I'm not a big fan of grass. I mean, ironically, astroturf in some ways is sort of better. You're preaching the choir. Because it's not, but in, in any case, if that becomes a multi-use, like we can move the bases and it's going to be Pony League or, or T-Ball League, it would be really nice to have that other K area be dedicated like to girls softball. There aren't specific girls things so much in the community where my girl plays softball at take if on a gigantic adult baseball field and the bases are moved in. Um, there's currently that's going to be a multi-use, but again it feels it's going to feel like there. Right now the kids, it's great to see those little pine sized kids playing T ball there. Um, but I think in some sense, boys T-ball, you're scooching in the bases and you're playing on that day. Those kids are super excited just to be out there and doing it. And have to do it. But to have something that is a, that's the girls softball field, I think would be fantastic from a gender diversity. We're focused, we're listening to that. Along the lines of the, we're listening to seniors and this is a, you know, this is cool. People can, you know, come and drink coffee, things like that. So that, that's point one. Um, point two is the, there's going to be a lot of stuff happening there, earth moving around, perhaps, um, particularly in the ball field area, things. I think you guys have a great opportunity when you are putting finishing touches on things and landscaping to not, I would love to see more native landscaping going in. Um, and I think I'll go further than just to say, when it all gets knocked down and then it's put back together again, some nice native here and there. I make a big push for, I mentioned this in my email, that space is massive. And you know, the big ball field, there are no kids, well, I should say no. There are a couple of high school kids who practice there once in a while who hit the ball a long way. But by and large, with the seventh and eighth grades, kids are barely making it out of the outfield. And so, to hit the ball from home plate to that fourth potty is probably major league home run at 450 <laughs> feet or something. Like there, I think there's space in there. But what I would love to see is to take that opportunity, have the park district leave and a micro prairie or something, but adjacent to that natural play area. Um, I'm not a civil engineer. I know the space you're talking about where there are drainage issues that goes from George's, between George's house, that's right there at the end of Edge Brook, yes. and the, the ball field. What's now traditionally a, this is the place where you leave that area of Strawberry Hill if you want to go to the lagoons that way and you cut up through the back and make it there, which asterisk, maybe there's another opportunity to make that officially. <laughs> A walkway because people use it right now unofficially. So that's that's yeah. the crossing out on it on the yeah. Exactly. Right, right. You're going right back to the end of back style. So, yeah. Do you think that that's something that folks in that neighborhood would support? Yes. Yeah. 100%. 100%. And it should be narrowed, leveled down to five feet. Yeah, and absolutely. It's always difficult to get the five feet. We're talking about that. Like, how many neighbors like that? It's disappointing that the, uh, the IDOT didn't take the opportunity to paint some nice bike lanes when they resurfaced that portion, which would have made the travel from Forest Way and uh, the lagoons or the botanic gardens better. 
notwithstanding that, I think yes. You see, when you see people in the neighborhood, there's two ways that, particularly people in our neighborhood, access the lagoons. If you go you cut through behind the ball field, or you go all the way down to the picnic area. So you have to ride around when it's wet then. Like if you're on your bike, you, you can't that, walk. That you whole area gets just slowly down. through there yeah. sometimes. It's bad. And I think going back to the, the native plantings there, I think there's opportunities to take and bring somebody in. And I will, I'm going to guess a little bit based on what was in the package of we might need to push the scope of this project to make it more attractive in doing this. If that means make the project dollars bigger, it would be cool to, like, again, lead on native plantings and incorporate that in as, um, you know, so I don't know how many people, I see it all the time. The roots of native plants are like down to like infinity and um, it's water management's much better. And to the extent that that could be incorporated in there and the park district can lead on that and set an example of what we're doing this both for aesthetics and water management. And it's kind of what we did for, in Tango Factor, right? Yeah, absolutely. That, exactly. 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 Yes, it's adjacent to the school there. Yes. We, and again, like I said, micro prairies there where you've got the educational opportunities. Kids are coming here and saying, like, look, there's, I mean, I'll tell you what, the first time that I showed my daughter a monarch butterfly egg sitting on there, it's like, whoa, what are you kidding? Um, so I think that there's some, some fantastic stuff there. Um, last thing I'll make, or excuse me, two last things very quickly. I think a big plug for the uh, permeable walkway for much the same reasons um, uh, that, that you've already articulated. I think it fits the character of the drainage issues. Um, it's West Park is quiet. Our little nook back there in the community is pretty quiet. I don't know if it's the intent to drive traffic there, but I would gather that most of the local residents would be able to say, keep it quiet because we like it quiet back here. Um, I walk my dog constantly year round. I get that there's people walking in December around Fagot for exercise. It's closer to the downtown, it's more central. Um, there's no time. There's no time. <laughs> there. It's just not. Um, the, again, it's so quiet out there that um, making it, adapting it to higher levels of use, I think would be- So the trade-off is worth it. Wasteful and it's absolute. So and I think to the extent that there's, your maintenance costs are correlated to your hundreds and hundreds of people are doing this and circling this, I don't think you're gonna see that. I welcome that. I mean, I think it's a fantastic idea to have that sort of movement of walking. Um, for the same reason, and last point is, I don't see any use for fitness stations um, out there. You've got a, an existing playground, um, which yeah, monkey bars ish, but there are there are parallel bars out there. There are things to climb on, there are things to pull. Um, there's tennis courts to play on. I, mean, it's, I, I I have a hard time. I have a really difficult time envisioning anybody going like, "Oh, let's hustle over to West and like do some sit-ups on an incline bench or something." Like, and it, I don't know, it just doesn't. Uh, now we see um, use. In 10 weeks a year, 12 weeks a year. Yeah, they can't use the big field. I'm working with this and I'm doing other things, making the big field more flexible. They, they can't now. Now they can't. If, you did well, if we were to do a, stuff. if we were to do uh, a multi surface, multi age group field, we, we could use that for some kindergarten games. I think we would likely find that um, there's going to be obviously competition multiple age groups. So I, I the, the added inventory of the additional field is important, but um, the K field is not necessarily as impacted by water conditions as the, the larger field at the back of the park. The big field too, the infield grass conditions get to a point where because of the water, where you can't move big equipment across the, the, 
the actual infield, you can't blow it. And if you had a like T-ball kid, you'd be like hitting into the US Open rough where the ball would just go boom. Definitely are like reading verbatim from a concern even when I got the, the grass was so long the kids couldn't put the ball in. It's yeah. It's, <laughs> I just have one quick question. So I'm looking at the, the aerial view and I used to pick up my son there in third fourth grade. But I don't quite understand, and I'm just trying to check where the yeah. native plantings would go. If you, if you want to take like 30 seconds, say plantings here, plantings here. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah. I mean, Go ahead, absolutely. Chuck, for you guys. Um, so behind this field, this is where Chris was talking about where a lot of the water, and then right up there is where people cut through yeah. to Dundee to get to there. Okay. I think there's opportunities here. Um, you know, when, when I say natives, a lot of people think like, um, Purple coneflowers or like pretty like shiny things like that, but there's a lot of other yeah. um, grasses and uh, irises and things like that that do well in moist areas and also work on that. But one of the other points that I was making is that with this natural area adjacent here, um, there's the t-ball field, and like six inches past the infield gets used because the girls don't hit that far and the t-ball kids don't hit that far. Sometimes there's football in the fall that happens here where kids practice lacrosse. But, and, and again, where I mentioned here, this is a massive shot for any kid playing on this field. I think there's opportunities like kind of all in this area or even around this natural area back in here. I think there's a lot. It looks like in the picture, kind of cramped. When you're there, it's just, it's, Big. It's just it's really big, and I think there's a lot like adjacent here, the toilet, whatever, this here, and again, that a lot here. And I think the village is doing a lot on the other side, on the Dundee side of that, in terms of planting some native trees, uh, plants and grasses out there, planting, which yeah. it looks good and you know, might be a nice complement um, on the other side of that, on the you know that hedgerow. So let me ask you a question there. So that particular bird. Well, thanks for pointing that out. That's really helpful. Let me ask you a question, just as someone who is, is your is your house visible from this photo? No. Okay. So it's um where her computer. Well, it's so over here. Okay. So one of the one of the particular things about that landscape for along Dundee is it's not what we would define in the industry as high quality plantings. It's mostly buckthorn and honeysuckle. Things that kind of can fall on that invasive species. In that brush area, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So how, how critical, because if, if we were to do a native restoration in that area, we would lose our screen to Dundee Avenue. Yes, we would have, temporarily. Yes, we would have residents that were used to a 40 foot tall screen of Buckthorn now viewing traffic on Dundee Avenue. So how, how important do you guys think that that screen is to those folks who may live on Willow Tree Lane? Very do, do you happen to live on Willow Tree? No, I don't, but I, but I would think that people who live on Willow Tree would need that buffer. They would, you mean you're talking about taking that away? Well, if, if, if we're talking about native plantings, there's a potential for, you know, looking at some of those areas for plantings, and I just wanted to kind of understand the, com the community feeling on that particular berm. I, I'm not proposing taking it away. I'm just asking the question. Good feedback. That, that's, that's what my thought was as well. So, does so, someone on the other side of Dundee? Because I'm right there on the other side. And just my personal feedback as a resident, not as a board member, is that I wouldn't like that taken away because I, I can see it from my house. And when the school trimmed stuff away, I didn't like it. I mean, they put stuff back now, but. That's just my opinion from someone who's on the other side of that street. So I'll take it a little bit different view there. So if you're talking about this, there's an elevation change there. Yes. And so, like you know, you talked about before, when you go back behind that, you've got to go up an embankment and then it levels out to what is basically a grade. For Dundee, so the entire park is so probably yeah, yeah. You know, the drainage is an issue because yes. it's about six feet below Dundee yeah. grade. Um, yes, in here, a ton of buckthorn, a ton of like nasty stuff. 
if you live on will and I appreciate Stephanie's on the other side and she's looking at a different thing happening. To the extent I'm only going to comment about what you would think about in terms of seeing the different deep traffic. If you live on Willow Tree here, um, you know, your sight line here is school, 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 tennis courts, school, 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 tennis courts, you know, maybe four houses there to the end. We've got direct line of sight view to there. I'm not advocating like burn it down. Like let's see like all kinds of cars. I do think that you could have an opportunity to maybe selectively pull, and I don't mean pull one tree here and then move it. But you might be able to phase something in where you say we're going to replace. What we previously had lived with kind of native pots, where we might take a ten by ten box and clear out all the invasives, and then plant native trees and shrubs and things in that area, and then you're not going from you know, 40 foot tall screens to, you know, yes. So I, yes. I, I appreciate it. And, and I think even to that. the extent that you are here, when you're looking out over that, you are, you know, that's that from here to Dundee is the size of that portion of willow tree, which you are looking across both of those ball fields into a berm up. Even if you're removing Park District's Buckthorn that is part of that screen, on the other side of that, like where the photo cuts off, is the area in which the, the village has now also cut down a lot of stuff. Their very young trees are going in bushes. I don't expect those to be screened. They don't look like that. They look like single stems for the most part. Um, I don't live on Willow Tree. I think there, there's a way to do it to I think, mitigate that concern, but still, again, that, I mean, this, you're absolutely right, the buckthorn. The neighborhood is crawling the buckthorn mainly because of it's developed in the late 50s as a Greta Leonard or a track. Like, let's put houses everywhere, and the buckthorn grew. Like it's supposed to highly aggressively everywhere, and it went up quick and it provided a lot of people screens. And now we're realizing that maybe, that's, maybe that wasn't the best right. <laughs> approach. Sorry. Things. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And both of your input. Thank you very much. So, uh, next up, we'll be um, sharing everything we learned here and then the emails that we received with our architects. And, um, so some of the native plantings, we've already actually started talking to them about that, similar to what we did at Takeo. Um, and so they're, they'll get to work on this, and we're going to share um, their concept plan on uh, Tuesday, August 3rd. We're having a, a meeting that starts at 6 p.m. I invite you to join us in that one, tell your neighbors. The architect will be here to develop, to show the concept plans that would submit for Auslan. Those can be tweaked. What can't be tweaked is any major elements we put in for us like that. So if we say we're going to put a shelter, we have to put a shelter exactly where it is can be replaced a little bit, and things like that. So we'll be sharing those um, conceptual drawings at that meeting and then sharing with our board the um, input from that meeting um, at our seven o'clock board meeting. I will not be able to attend that. Okay. Will there be an opportunity to perhaps see it in advance? No, just send me an email, or I have your email. I do have your email. You can come in before that. If you can. Take a look at it. So, okay. all right. Thank you. Well, actually, just on behalf of the board, I have to say this is exactly how it's supposed to work. And you shared with us really valuable information that certainly represents your point of view, but I'm guessing reflects the neighborhood. Uh, I don't know if you're in that neighborhood. You can just speculate on what people want. Very much appreciated advocating for uh, our very large population of seniors who do like to uh, have social areas to gather in. And what's beautiful about this design, what I like so much better than I don't know why we are stepping off in the atmosphere or something, is how flexible all of these elements are for more than one group of people. So we have, and I really liked you advocating for girls' softball. Sometimes it's really symbolic that girls are 
girls or something in the world because you know baseball is a boys sport you know if you just do baseball it feels like girls are just having to overlay their sport onto a boys baseball field so i really do appreciate that but all of these elements are very flexible and you know you've got the third and fourth graders using them you've got the neighborhood using the, the, the track the walking track and so forth so um it's an exciting project i appreciate so much what you shared with us um, and continue to communicate with us i do say two last things before i super quick um permanent volleyball posts might also be very cool to have there um not super obtrusive but if you were you know to pull a tight net rather than the that's the good plate and playing off this idea i love the senior idea to the extent that it might be incorporated into any like pathway to the lagoons. I mean, I know as much as West Park is not necessarily used in a constant basis, particularly by necessarily an older crowd, the lagoons are, um, people are constantly walking that five mile loop. And if you had a- But if you were shaded areas or small tree areas, maybe even the moonlight sort of the clever lighting, I'm not saying lights, but something to make it a little bit more appealing. Then people at night might go and gather there. Yeah, I, I think the, the, the that seating area. seating area idea incorporated as a, I just took a five mile walk in the lagoons and now I'm gonna sit down and rest, yeah. or this is where I put my shoes yeah. on and have a little coffee before I venture into there. I think it would be a fantastic. Or you can buy your way. neighbors before you go. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks. So by that. the way, I can see the, the people Area being moved to another area um, in the park. I mean, I'm not an architect, but I, I don't think they. I don't think you should take something that exists and consider it unmovable. That there's other ways to lay out that park, and I can see right away where another two ball area could be put, and a girls' baseball could be put. So, I mean, I think that's for your architecture, you know, yeah. consider. Yeah, we'll get the old thing. Thank you guys. Do you need nope. any of your other business? No. Nope. Did you guys sign in? Fine. Did you sign yeah. a sheet? Yeah. Okay. Did you put your email addresses and your phone numbers on there? Yeah. Didn't, but I emailed you. Know, so okay. Yeah, I have Perfect. That Great. We'll just keep on sharing information. We don't even know each other. So this is the thing. This is a A cute mate. And I, I want to know the record that none of our commissioners play people on. So. Yeah. Well, we don't need to go by. 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 Yeah. They can also yeah. stream, the meeting is streamed as well. Yeah, also, oh, they, 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 they send comments, you know, feedback back and forth is really helpful and you really like the input. So, um, we're having a lot of party on um, September. I don't know if you're recording it. Yes, I do. Oh, in September. It should have been August. So, yeah, well, when we get some input, we'll, we'll tell them what we do. Oh, okay. And maybe we, because this isn't going to happen immediately. Thanks for Thank, you. Thank you so Thank much, you. Thank you very Thank you. Right. That's great. It's supposed to work. Exactly. Uh, really uh, and we'll take all that and put back to our, to our landscape architects and uh, incorporate them into to the design. It's all possible. It, they're all ideas that you have. So much of what they said, every, all that they said is already sort of Theoretically, woven into this, so um, you know, that was nice really to see that. Uh, they agree. So that was really nice. yeah. uh, okay. okay. So the financial report. We are moving on to the financial report. Woven into this. This one is complete. John will provide the synopsis of the report for us. John. Yep. Thank you. And uh, just to go over at uh, a high level some of the reports that we have in here. So uh, first. Uh, Part of the report uh, just covers the cash balances, cash and investment balances, what they stand as of uh, the end of the month, and the and like for comparative purposes, you see that uh, the, the beginning balance um, and uh, the ending balance that uh, May 31 also. Uh, so, May 30 and 31 balances. Um, as you can see, interest rates are um, continuing to, to, to struggle, um, but on all, uh, that's the just a snapshot of the overall cash investment uh, picture for the district. And then as we get into the actual results, uh, we, we, we did add another, um, I, I think this has been the case uh, in previous months too, but just to add a little more context to these numbers, we are going with uh, four years, uh, with, with three years being compared to just given the mess up the COVID year uh, for the June 30, 2020 results. Uh, but 
overall, as we look at these numbers in the community, there's there's solid numbers um, for uh, many of the programs here. What uh, jumps out to me is, is daycare that that number does obviously include uh, a grant in there, but nonetheless, there's very positive results from that perspective. The beach department is doing fantastic, uh, so that is uh, very just see some very positive results there also. And then down at the bottom of the page here, just the summary, um, analytically looking at it, um, it's kind of a big uh, change in the black academy slash take department, which is a direct result of a, a schedule transfer that uh, went out in the previous uh, fiscal years, but did not go out uh, this past uh, uh, year due to the uh, uh, COVID pandemic uh, last year. So, if there's any questions beyond that, I'd be happy to address them at this time. So, so I'm, I'm sorry. So, I'm looking at the rec admin ticket, but I, I saw there was a big difference, but I didn't understand it. So, there's a transfer that we have not made yet, but we had made prior to this point. Uh, correct. That is exactly right. Barbara. Okay. And that's actually what's on the agenda tonight the transfer. Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, not for the previous year, but we noticed that uh, the reason we invest a certain amount of money. Is there some sort of regulatory reason that's would we be able to invest in the bond or something? We absolutely would. Yeah. Something I'm actually taking a look at. We do. Uh, I just need to weigh the benefits of the additional cost that might come along with that, whether it's additional collateral or whatever comes along with the purchase of those. Uh, on, but we call them government bonds, but that's definitely an opportunity and a discussion I have in there. That's interesting. And I started that. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, thank you. Any Anything, Stephanie, that you had a question about? I had a question. Just, it's nice to see the fitness numbers come back a little bit. And still nice to see the daycare revenue because of those grants so high and the beach revenue. And I appreciated in the packet how a lot of your um, enrollments are now going to 2019 instead for the comparison. That was really helpful. Yeah, All right. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, if nothing else, um, financial, we will move on to the executive director report. And Mrs. Shepard will review items uh, for us. Great. So there's a lot of stuff in there. What I'm going to say is it's really nice to start getting back in normal. Yeah. 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 More special events this weekend. There's a camp out of the beach with 250 people signed up. Um, oh, incredible, the highest number ever. So it just shows that people really want to get back to involved in the community, especially our outdoor. So um, we were, we we're seeing an uptick on the community and special events, maybe including the, the Thursday night concert series, right in conjunction with the uh, uh, Chambers Farmers Market. Uh, so those are picking up along with our camp. It's great to not only end the beach because of our new cast model. So we're about halfway through summer. We're doing really well. We did it, unfortunately have um, uh, one um, early childhood camp that did go into uh, uh, had COVID. Oh, one person had uh, COVID, so they had to be quarantined for two weeks. So if, if we're not out of the woods yet, just when you think you are, there's still those young kids can't get vaccinated. So we're keeping in that mind. You can keep remember that as we go forward and, and programs and stuff, and we keep on watching the regulations and, and how the new school years and work. So staff is working it very closely. So uh, kudos to everybody. The uh, the parks team did an amazing job this weekend in a, a sewer line break at the beach. Um, we're out there to care of it. It's fixed now, and so two days of, of downtime for our beach house, but they had for money to put this place and now we're back up and running. So that was a total team effort with that. Um, so other than that, Fourth July was a great event. We're looking forward to our fireworks from Labor Day. Just note that we do have a Lakefront Advisory meeting on August 10th. I don't know if we can be there, right? Is that correct? Or, yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. The Canadian board will put something like uh, the state. Oh, okay. so, uh, oh that's so nice. That's the commissioner one. Yes. Um, so that'll be exciting to see feedback on that. So as we always think, we're always looking to see how we can improve or start thinking about next year already. And we're also looking for lots 
Um, I would imagine that the team's doing a great job. Um, they're all tired, they're exhausted. Uh, we're running, our biggest obstacle right now is hiring, um, especially in our day daycare, um, in children's circle, full, full day preschool, um, the challenge that everybody in the nation's having, we are also having. So our team is creatively looking at um, solutions and we'll probably go back to the board at a committee meeting right now um, in regards to some ideas you'll be have for that. But, it's definitely an issue that we are watching carefully and uh, brainstorming solutions. Uh, we are very, very close to hiring our world's first full-time dedicated human resources person. So uh, hope to have that done by the end of this week. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, um, so other than that, do you have any questions on my report? It was nice to see such healthy enrollments for next year. Right, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and every private camp, day camp got hit this week with COVID. Oh, really? So unfortunately, we're in in bad company with everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because we're very, very, it's a two-day-a-week one. So, um, thank goodness it wasn't our, one of our bigger camps. So, they've been, they've been doing a great job. Staff has been very safe. And we're, we're outside a lot. We don't want to be outside. <laughs> so, so, but it's been, everybody's doing a great job, you can say. And um, as you brought up, and for the audience there, uh, Chris's team has been really working hard on the squeaky train at Duke, um, at Duke Park. So they finally found something to stop that squeaking. Uh, we had a, a very patient neighbor of the park. And I say patient because I, I walk there almost every day. And it was loud. So we appreciate her patience. And I think they have it solved. So. Thank you for working on that. Um, and thank you, um, Erin, for all the communication. We did a lot of communication for the um, meeting for West. Letters were sent out, uh, signs were posted around town. Um, they went out all of our social media. So it was not just on a tweet, it was throughout the whole district. Um, in addition, we're thinking of doing a survey with our database, uh, email database, mm -hmm. uh, because even though it's on one side of town and by neighbors, it's also a community park. Access to which we want to get their input um, and things like that. I'm looking at uh, um, talking baseball and talking to people and things like that. So um, we're, we're excited about that. So, yeah. I do have a question. How will this get incorporated into the school district? Such an overall project, you know, not only the carpeting of them, but the use of the space is here is going to be sure. That's a, that's a great so I'm just wondering, how does that, how is that work? So right now we're concentrating, concentrating on the Aslan portion of the, yes. of the project, right? So everything that involves with Aslan. The school district will have to give us, uh, what was it? Uh, what was it? They'll be giving us an easement. Easement. Uh, yes. So we'll, we'll ask them to get the, the park district easement, which allows us to use the, the school district, some of the school district properties that we want. Yes, right. as part of the plan. So yeah, they'll give us an easement similar to what we did for the playground like, um, there. So we've already talked to the district advisor for to do that. Um, and then after that, we'll start talking about other components that there'll be that they want to include in this project. Um, and then we'll have a, a separate agreement. To, we know that um, we're working together on these things. And there, she's uh, yeah, there, Dr. Wang already talked to the board about the project and. Um, some of the things that we're looking to do and discussing with them some of the aspects of this project that we'll be looking at. And since all of it has to be in place before the application of the to Brasland, just what's the timeline of working with the school? Is I imagine whatever elements they um, would consider to be essential that so would get that would be part of what we say we're doing. Uh, no, so only the, the items that we talked about today would be part of the ASA grant. Oh, okay. And then, okay. um, so that, that's it. So okay. any other things they want to do in conjunction with this project, and would be separate monies, but no separate. So they've already talked about these same elements. Good. Um, okay. They're going to be that back to us. So that's where the exercise um, stations came up. Oh, wow, it might not be um, something that, we, that maybe resonates with you. School, the she feels the school district would be closed oh, uh, okay. as part of the PE program. So, running around, they might say, okay, 
people love to you know that kind of playground is really used yes. uh, heavily. So yes. having a different avenue, and usually during PE, they don't go to the playground that much. They do different exercises. So that's where that came. The shelter is another idea. The council ring is another idea for outdoor classrooms. So trying to they're pushing kids outside more and more. And, you know, we see that trying to change. Yes. Um, so that was a big portion of it. Um, it's multi-use astroturf was also they have the same issue that we do. They can't get their kids out of the field because it's too wet. So the drainage was part of that. Yeah, would you agree? Yeah, yeah I, I would say to point, um, they're completely on board with the collaborative nature of the project. Yeah. We've had such incredible success working together that you know they have a lot of trust in us and what we're gonna you know, try to accomplish here. And, they're they're not able to go for a house like rent. So um, the benefit of partnering with the park district is helping to leverage those state dollars for them as well, but they're not able to go through the state. All right. Anything else? Thank you. Stephanie? I love the addition of that shade structure structure there. Um, I walk by there all the time and especially with the camps as you mentioned. I keep thinking, oh my God, it's so hot. These poor kids, there's no shade. And rather than have to go inside, and plus the pickleball users, if they have to go to the washroom, it's just a no brainer, really. I mean, I know it's not a, a for certain, but it would be a great addition. Yeah, and we can just warm that. So we do a family Yeah, but I agree. But let's look for tennis, tennis equipment players, pickleball, baseball teams before school district. I can see too much use. And we talked about um, actually for the uh, Ministry of Architects brought it out, but like, what do you think about ideas of green gardens and things that would really take up that? So um, yes. that was definitely something that uh, we seem to stop here yes. that they would like to incorporate in. And I'm not sure if that's an you know, element of the Osley yeah, grant, so but you know. For the Osley grant, we have to have five main recreation components. So okay. athletic fields, tennis, yeah. um, restroom, shade shelter. So, the state ne doesn't necessarily consider landscaping to be a recreation element, but that type of beautification can really tie into your overall experience on a trail and can create value. So for us in our application, being technically correct is very important because we don't have a needs-based application. Yeah. So we're competing against communities that may be in greater need. So we have to make sure our, our application is technically flawless and yeah. also hitting all the points. So those types of elements really help to um, flush out our application. Well, if you need to throw another element in there, you know, we still love that little bike circle thing that we didn't get to do at um, Inner Green Bay. Oh, the fellow's home. I love that thing. We'll still get to do it someday. We'll get someday, but I don't think there's room in this park. Maybe Watts or somewhere, but I still love that idea and we didn't get to do it. So. I just do stuff, me. I love that. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> all right. Any other questions? No? Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Um, then, moving on to action items, I entertain a motion to approve the annual treasurer's report as presented. So, second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Boren? Yes. Commissioner Schneider? Yes. President Brooks? Yes, motion passes. I entertain a motion to approve resolution number 928 to commit $300,000 in public fund balances for future benefits as presented. So Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. President Brooks? Yes, motion passes. I entertain a motion to approve the idle free resolution number 929 as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I am the representative for the sustainability committee. And at my very first meeting, a discussion ensued. I, I'm just sitting listening because I knew, obviously about uh, the village putting up, uh, you know, kind, no idling signs at the schools and at the village. And uh, I said, well, you know, we have to improve the park district because we have so many cars coming to pick, pick up and there should be consistency. 
And so what it did, what that whole little interaction did was, was uh, sort of justify the fact that the park district should have representation on these committees that are, you know, some of its village committees, because we do have really good input at times like that. So it was one little thing, but I'm really glad it was there and able to, um, you know, represent for the park district. So I think I believe we're getting our time. We actually already have them all. We, we made them up before we did. Oh, you did? Which I, I learned. Uh, oh. She goes, oh, great. We already have signs up. I'm like, look at that. Before the, the, before the village of school district. Interesting. So they're out there. Are they uh, permanent? Are okay. they in our, our fire lanes for the village houses? Or we have a lot of here. Um, we previously said um, drop off so Now they're saying we're we'll having them on. Yeah. So that came from our green, our internal green committee oh, here as part of district. Right. Yes. And part of our strategic plan of moving that to the So that's how you back around. And, and now I will share that with the committee. Yeah. Also, this came on all of our campus. So that was part of the best practice. Yes, that's practice. So this was kind of the final thing to make it official. I love it. Well, but more. Yes. yes. Very good. Awesome. Very good. We'll call both things. Mr. Warren. Yes. Mr. Snyder? Yes. President Brooks. Yes. Excellent. Uh, I entertain a motion to approve moving the August 17 regular board meeting to August 3rd at 7 p.m., canceling the regular committee meeting on August 3rd, and changing the September 21 regular board meeting to September 20 at 7 p.m. as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? There hasn't, been, there hasn't been a notice on the calendars to change the date. So you had to get it approved, right? right? Approval first. That's, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Yep, on Thursday when I'm back in again. Oh, okay. That'll all get changed for okay. you. Yeah. yeah, and thank you for taking that work. Because I have a conference to start the next day. I know we were saying before that, and we were saying earlier today. Sure. Okay, roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Boren? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. President Brooks? Yes, motion passes. Is there any other business? There is not. Okay. I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion right. passes. All right. Thank you. Thanks for the presentation. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.